Growing up, my dad wasn't in the picture. As a kid, I always yearned for a father figure. Now that Force is older, I want to make sure he gets my input. <laughs> Even when he doesn't want it. So why don't you pull up a chair and join our fireside chat? Three, two, one, and we're live. What's going on, Forest Ends? Not much. Took, oh. a, took a little while to set up the podcast, but... Yeah, uh, my car got jacked, GTA style. So, uh, <laughs> we lost my phone, so we're using the tablet. So hopefully this comes out okay. We'll find out whether it does or not uh, when we're editing this. But either way, you might get an ugly Forest, or it might be really grainy, or it might look great. So uh, we'll see. And the post editing process. We will see. And we're also going to try and get some video of the game we're going to review later. Probably right away after we're done talking about how jank our setup is. Yeah. So uh, what happened with the setup? Uh, it, it took a while because we have to use the tablet. And the tablet's not great. It's hard to like record videos. You tap the video button and it doesn't shoot videos. And now you tap the record button and it records. It's stupid. Uh, at least the camcorder is still working like normal though, so thankfully at least we have that saving grace. Yeah, and uh, we're here. Yeah, after some trials and tribulations with the setup. <laughs> <laughs> and also we found out that the PlayStation 4 cord is a very universal device. Yeah, it was, it's a data transfer too, so if you guys ever are in a pinch with your podcast you and you want a PS4, there you go. Yeah, some of my uh, transfer equipment was also in my car when it was jacked, so... Yes. Because I was just going to charge my phone. <laughs> hopefully it's found. Yeah, hopefully soon. Um, so let's get into the game. First of all, this is not going to be entirely spoiler free, so if you haven't totally beat the game yet, you should probably not listen. If you listen. haven't gotten to like... Alright, if you haven't gotten... No, that's a spoiler. That's a spoiler. If you haven't gotten to the middle of the game, or anything, then don't watch or listen. Also, if you're a parent and you have a younger aged child... You probably don't want them playing this game because... If you have a child at all and you're a bit of a, you know, and your your kid is like, you know, not really... If your kid is like 12 or under, probably not great. If they're 12 or over, you might still object to the game because yeah. it has marijuana use, blatant marijuana use. Um, it has lesbian um, interactions. Nothing like... That's too... not a problem. The problem would be the sexual... Counter. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's there not are, there very are, graphic, but... I think there's a couple. We haven't run into... We've only run into one, but, you know, we haven't beaten the game. Right, so they just kiss, really. and uh, they, So far. And there's some post-coitus talking, but they're both dressed. There's nothing, like, terrible. Mm, yeah. um, but if you're opposed to anything like that, you probably shouldn't let your kids play the game because mm -hmm. it's blatantly obvious in everything that they do that it's... Uh, uh, and there's a lot of blood. A yeah. lot of blood. Oh, we didn't even get and into explosions. the violence. Yeah. Um, people are actually more, uh, more opposed to the lesbian stuff than uh, the violence, I'm sure. Well, mostly. Against the, the, the sexual encounter. Yeah. And the game is extremely violent. It's probably the most graphically violent game I've played. There are probably worse games out there. but um, I think it's the worst because it's very... It's not like super extra gory, but every murder is graphic, and the, graf the graphics are detailed enough that it does look like a real person. Yeah, and there, but thankfully there aren't too many people. But if you let your kid play Doom, I'm sure they won't be super affected by Last of Us. Yes. So with all those caveats out of the way, um, I let Forrest play because he's a very mature kid, and we talk about almost everything that's happened in the game more than once. Most of them are on this podcast, actually, if you go back and listen to some of the older ones. So uh, we're going to skip over all the detailed talk about that. Maybe we'll get into some of that later. But uh, we're going to go into reviewing the game. So we're three minutes, almost uh, four minutes into the podcast, and we're finally talking about the game. So yeah. what do you think? First impression. Dina sucks. Dina sucks. She almost shot me in the face. <laughs> she almost shot me in the face trying to help me. Uh, I don't know. Besides that, she's also kind of annoying. A little context who Dina is? Uh, Dina, Dina, well... So after the events of the first game, and Joel takes you to Jackson, uh, oh, um, so, you're not too loud. Just my headset was turned up way up because it wasn't reading right. Yeah. So Ellie and Joel are in Jackson, and um, Dina and Jesse are like. Who are Ellie and Joel? Oh. For someone that's never played. 
For somebody who's never played Ellie and... I would say Joel is Ellie's father type figure force is picking at his uh I'm not picking at it. Right now. It almost fell apart. Uh, so basically in the first game, Joel saves Ellie from this evil from evil people called the well, they're not really evil, but they're they're the fireflies and they wanted to cut into her brain to try and find a cure. Um, oh, so what's going on is there's a fungus that's controlling people and it takes over the mind and turns them into mutant creatures. Yeah. And, uh, They're basically zombies. Ellie's the only one that's immune to it, and they wanted to get to the, the cure for the entire human race. They have to come to Ellie, and Joel became her father during the mission. Yeah, pretty much. So Joel tried. Joel's job was to smuggle her, but then, like you know, as they as they went along together, they got close. And you, a bunch of and I don't go on Wikipedia and look all this up. This is from yeah. Last of Us One. This is not even into the game we're talking about. I don't remember much of Last of Us except for the online. So. There are a lot of people that die in the first one, but the main plot is pretty much about Joel and Ellie getting away from the Fireflies. And him becoming her father. That's yeah. what the real main story is. The story for the game is amazing. Mm -hmm. The graphics are phenomenal. In the original? Well, in both of them, really, for the time. Both of them are... Uh, the new one is, like, really good, and then the old one got remastered for PS4, but that was pretty early on in the PS... I mean, yeah, pretty early on in the PS4's lifespan, so... At the end of PS3, it was a phenomenal game. I never played a remaster version. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, in the second game, you start off in Jackson, which is the new town that Joel and Ellie live in after escaping from the Fireflies, and uh, Dina and Jesse are people around Ellie's age that also live in Jackson. And basically, Jackson is a town that's kind of been made for the apocalypse. It's kind of a weird town, though, because they have electricity except for when they need it on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They all have PlayStations and big screen TVs, but it seems like there's no electricity in the town. It's probably a lot of generators. Yeah. Because you have to m make a bunch of generators do their thing during the game, so. This is a, now I have to worry about the podcast because I gotta sneeze. And now that we're on camera, it's harder to edit, so I don't want to edit a sneeze out. So, pardon me for picking my nose. Just uh, lean away from the light. I will if I sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, boogers go flying and the camera catches it. Just like in the last podcast, we'll have a booger in every podcast. So anyway, Dina <laughs> is also one of the one of the uh, participants in the sexual encounter later in the game. So base, yeah, but that's also a little weird because there's a lot going on. Yeah, she was. We can We don't have to unpack the story. Let's just yeah. get into the game. The game is great, except for Dina almost shooting me in the face. Dina is the partner that you're assigned. Like she follows you around. She's yeah. the AI character. She starts off following you and then. Throughout the game, you are either alone or somebody's following you. Mm -hmm. But the game is amazing. Like it looks really great. Uh, it's it's fun to play. And then um, Dina keeps getting in the way. Yeah. Forrest hates Dina because uh, she almost shot him. But I don't and think then, the bullets hurt you anyways. And she's super annoying because like in Last of Us, you really got to worry about your resources. Even on like normal, you want to find everything because it's better to be maxed out on everything than try and manage what you have. So Derek wants to strangle her right now because he's playing on hard and there's nothing for him. We're not playing on easy or anything. We're playing on normal. Mm -hmm. But anyway, she always like tells you to go. Like she always tells you where to go to. And I find I found that that's kind of one of the most frustrating things so far. Is uh, is just like it's so annoying that the game is trying to egg you on to leave before you've explored everything. Or you sure not find anything. Forest is in this game. You can smash windows. And Forrest has a predilection of smashing every window in the entire game. I cooled it down a little bit because I realized this probably was losing me a lot of fights early on. But So Forrest goes around and he smashes all the windows. He's like, how did he know I was there? And he gets so upset. I'm like, dude, you're smashing windows everywhere. Everyone knows you're there. That one fight was really hard, though, because like in, a lot, like, in some of the fights, the WLF, which is the Washington Liberation Front, the main enemy of the game, sometimes you'll hit one... WLF guy, you'll get one sneaky, you'll get two sneaky, and then you shoot one, and all of a sudden they all know where you are. And then you get, you have to run through houses and stuff, and I kept dying doing that. Sometimes I shoot when you're putting your silence around. <laughs> and also for some extra context, basically, uh, we, some, we trade sometimes playing the game. So, I've been playing most of the game, to be honest, but, like, if I'm ever so bad that... You know, so what happens is Forrest plays the game, and when it gets so terrible, he keeps dying and getting so mad, I'm scared he's going to break my controller. I take over and I execute everyone very precision-like. So you kind of have two modes when you're playing. The gameplay is phenomenal. It's very responsive. Although, a couple gripes I have is, number one, there's no cover system. 
So when you're hiding behind stuff, she doesn't attach to it, so it's really easy to come out where you get seen. Mm -hmm. So they really should I wish they would have added a cover scene. I think it's supposed to be automatic. It's just like, it would be very nice if there was a button that you could press. So yeah. you knew you were And there. she like covers up against it, but she doesn't cover it because if you like aim or do anything else, she'll stand up out of cover, mm -hmm. which doesn't happen in most normal games. Well, it does, I think, I think she does do cover like against walls and stuff, mm -hmm. but the, the main thing is that sometimes you're in the open and you have to hide in the grass, and then when you're crouching and you aim, you stand up, which is the dumbest thing ever. Because when, you, when you're like on the ground crawling, you can shoot crawling, but you can't shoot crouch, which is kind of stupid. Right. So, anyways, um, there's no cover. That's one of my main gripes. Um, the sneaking is a little broken still because when you grab people and you stab them, when they're going, <laughs> and they're gurgling to death because you stab them in the throat, it's a very graphic game, um, everyone should be able to hear that and they should yeah. come up on you. Mm -hmm. um, on normal, it's pretty easy to go through and just shoot everybody. That's what Forrest normally does, or you can sneak around at Metal Gear esque style. I sneak kill like two people and, and then kill everyone without everyone I getting alerted. People. Yeah, um, you can craft stuff. You can craft bombs, Although arrows, is, bows. I found that it was a little annoying that like you can shoot like you shoot one person and then they all know where you are. Well, that's what would happen in real life because as soon as you shoot a gun, everyone's gonna know where it came from. But they're all but they're all spread out and like they close on you really quick. That's what happened in real life. But like. You just, it's a it's a it's a game about where you have a gun. It, the whole point of it is to shoot people with a gun. No, the point is to not get seen. It's like Metal Gear. It's not like a super action video game. It's yeah. a apocalypse. It is fun when you make it an action mm -hmm. game on normal when you have bullets though. Yeah, and it's not really an action kind of game. It's more of a sneaky kind of game. Uh, Unless you play a normal. The clickers are a little bit. They're different because now they can follow you a lot easier. They're blind, but they're kind of see you sometimes. I don't. I think there are two different types of clickers because I noticed that some of the clickers like have red faces and some of them are more white. Mm -hmm. But it's really confusing because later on along the line you find a sheet that has stage one, two, three, and four, and like the ones with the red faces look the same as you know the stage two or three. I think that would be a normal clicker. So. It's a little hard to tell the difference between some of them as well. Without getting too spoiler spoilery, how do you say well, that? We already gave a spoiler alert, so. Without too many spoilers, this is one of the most tear-jerking games I've played too. Um, that one scene wow. where that one person that I really like dies is uh, extremely sad and we happens early. Spoiler in the game. warning: We can say whatever we want. If you still are here and you didn't notice that we're going to be talking about spoilers then this is your last chance to leave. If you're still here, then that's your problem. When Joel died, it was the saddest moment. Well, One of the saddest any time moments. Oh, <laughs> I should have clicked <laughs> off right now. When Joel died, it, was so, it had him so early in the game. She gets beat with a golf club. No, he gets beat. I, yeah, it, I started out with she and I tried to change it. To <laughs> he gets stabbed in the face with like a seven iron. It goes right through his skull. It's pretty brutal. And it's all, uh, what's the guy's name? Tommy? So, yeah, it's all Tommy's fault it's for dropping Tommy's their names. Fault. If you wouldn't have dropped their names, they might have been alright. They might have been, but also, I'm sure if they were hunting those two, they would know what they look like. So then later on, there's another scene that's super sad, too. They go to this museum on Ellie's birthday, and it's a flashback, and her and Joel, that time they spend together, is like, it's just, it's saddening, it's so sad. I think it's really saddening for you, because, like, you know, like, Joel is Ellie's father figure, mm -hmm. and you know, you are a father, so... Yeah. Even for me, though, just talk about it, it does make me feel sad. Yeah, it's sad, because uh, she's remembering that and how sad she must feel there. Uh, you it play definitely... guitar sometimes, and Forrest is terrible at I'm it. I'm not terrible at it. I <laughs> mess it up the first time. <laughs> I played a beautiful song the first time. <laughs> you were playing as Joel, too. I'm sure it was easier. Uh-huh. That's what Forrest always says. He's like, how did you do that? I just snuck around, bro. I didn't break all the glass. <laughs> I didn't break The glass. scary music plays, and Forrest is like... <laughs> I don't do it anymore. There's someone over there! <laughs> How do they always know where I am? <laughs> you gotta admit, I'm much more sneakier than you when I kill everybody. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's kind of boring. I also get frustrated sometimes because, like you said... <laughs> I, everyone's gonna see that now. That's terrible. I hate the video podcast. I like the shirt, too. I look really good in it. Now I can't wear it again. I have to wash it. Because, like, <laughs> like you said... How embarrassing. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm a mess. Because, like you said, 
they gurgle, and I get so frustrated when you're being all sneaky and better, mm -hmm. and then they gurgle, and I'm like, how? You can shoot them too, that's pretty sweet, remember? Last night? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really graphic, <laughs> but like, you can beat them down, and then they like start cowering, and you can like stab them or shoot them again to make yeah, sure they're people dead. are gonna call CPS for letting me play this now. But it's a really, it's a really solid game, and the graphics... I mean, it's cool, because it's mm -hmm. something you can't do in real life, obviously. And the graphics are phenomenal. Probably the best game on PS4. If it gets, like... I wonder if they're just going to port it to PS5 or, like, remaster it with ray tracing and everything? They're not, because um, right now, when you buy a PS5, you just put a disc in, yeah. and it's just going to upgrade it to true 4K. Yeah, that's a little... I don't know. I think it'd be really cool, though, if they remastered it for ray tracing, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of, like, sun stuff, and I think with ray tracing, that game would look insane. They might have to re rework the whole engine to do that, though, so they probably won't do that. If they do, they have to pay for it. It's definitely yeah. not going to be free. They're going to remaster it and mm -hmm. resell it. They should remaster it online. <laughs> I'm sure there'd be online DLC. Uh, but it's kind of interesting because they're two discs and it's 38 gigs. It's not like big. Oh, it's so small too. Like all these giant games, there's no reason for them. No game looks better than The Last of Us 2 and the game is big. The game is big because there's more stuff going on. Like in Red Dead, it's a huge open world. Mm -hmm. But, like, in, in Last of Us, it's a story, so I don't understand why you need two discs for, like, a game that's, like, after the update, like, what, just a little over 40? Yeah, like, 42 gigs. That like, it's so small. Division it, 2 is, like, 131 gigs right now. That's also because of all the DLC that needs to be added. Yeah, but still, the game is nowhere near as beautiful as Last of Us. It's not really that much bigger than Last of Us, either. But, like, they're selling each DLC for 60 bucks. I'm sure each DLC for Division 2 is, like, a whole other game, which is why it's, like, three games. Pretty much. I, no, that's sixty dollars is all the all three of the DLCs. Oh. They're all three. Well then what the pieces. heck? Yeah, it, they're no the game the graphics are the best. The in scene cinematic displays, like when they go they're to cutscenes. They're pretty much the same as the game. They're the crazy. same as the rendered in game graphics, they're just closer up. Yeah. You can And they have they have like actual camera focus as well, but like mm -hmm. besides the camera focus and like the cutscene like camera movement it's the same. Like, you transition into a cutscene and you barely know what happened. You're like, why can't I move anymore? Yeah, like, uh, the one time when uh, the creature killed us in the second flashback with Joel, when he came up and he stabbed the crap out of it, mm -hmm. I thought for sure that the creature got me. I was like, how did too far apart for him to be able to grab me there? And it was this, just the start of the cutscene. That's how good the cutscene to the gameplay is. Yeah. It is really, it's the best game I've played so far. The graphics are so, like, it's crazy that the graphics are so good that you can't tell the difference. But it's also strange because, you know, we played for quite a bit now and like it doesn't even seem like we're really nearing the end at all. So it's kind of strange that this game looks so great and it's only like 42 gig. And it's huge. So there's no reason for all the other game makers to have their discs so big. Well, there is. Because it's not a huge open world like Red Dead. The reason why Red Dead is so big because you have an online open world, you have a story open world and all that. But when it launched, it didn't have the online open world. No, no, no. Division 2 doesn't have a huge online open world either. It's the one map. No. It's but just Division the whole two, map of Division 2 also has a bunch... There are a lot of things that maybe make it bigger. Like, we won't go into all of them, but I'm sure there are reasons. Alright, we're getting away from that. Although, basically the moral of, the, of this part is like, why does it have two discs? It's so small and no, so good looking. No, my, my moral of the story is why are these other games all so huge? Yeah. Because even know. like, uh, Detroit... Detroit's a, like a very linear game, and it was like uh, almost 100 gigs too. That one probably is technically more bigger. Technically, like we don't know because we're who knows how much more we have left. We don't know because we're dum dums who don't know anything about how to make a game. <laughs> yeah, we're also not through the game we're playing, so yeah. we have no idea. We've probably put in what do you think about 15, 18 hours? Uh, when did we get the game? I got it Saturday, but we didn't start till Sunday. So we played, played almost all Father's Day. So we played we played Sunday for probably a good six, eight hours. And then we played Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We played for about an hour or two. Uh, to, well, not Thursday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we probably played an hour or two each day. No, we've been at least at two, two, four, six, plus six, so twelve. Yeah. Two we're over ten hours into the game, and yeah. like, we're like kind of still in the middle of it. Derek's a little bit ahead of us. Uh, he's like a, a scene or two ahead, and he's probably got another couple hours in. And he says he still thinks there's a lot to go to. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how long the game goes. Mm -hmm. We well, could probably look it up online, but 
We didn't it's, do any research for this podcast. Yeah, we're trying to go in as blind as possible. I haven't watched anything, even mm-hmm. though a bunch of people... I don't want it to be spoiled, so... Yeah. So we're only about halfway in. We're only through Seattle. Uh, second chapter, Seattle. Yeah. So that's chapter three of the game, so who knows how far we are in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff we missed, too. I mean, it's, it's not as linear as all the other ones, because there's a lot to look at that we've missed. We missed a lot of stuff. I think a lot of it is, like, just sneaking around and finding stuff. Yeah. And, you know, my exploration, I would say, is decent. We got maybe three-fourths of the stuff a little bit more than that, maybe four-fifths-ish. Like, so, I would say I'm decent, which isn't great, but I can't imagine, like, what an actual good explorer could find. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, what what would you give it uh, from zero to ten? I think it's probably. I say probably a nine-ish. What games are better than it? What would you give a ten to? The reason I give it a nine, I'm not I'm not thinking of comparing it to other games. I just think because of some of the gripes that we have and some of the small like technical errors, or not technical errors, but technical like oddities like the gurgling nobody hears Mm -hmm. and also like the movement snapping a little bit here and there uh yeah there are some uh when the camera pans around she kind of moves with the camera uh so if you move the camera around too much uh sometimes she has awkward motions on screen the movement's a little clunky at times at times and then the gurgling stuff and then also like they don't really well i'm sure they do teach you in the tutorials but it's a little... That you didn't do, that they're all lit up. New tutorial, new tutorial, new tutorial. But it's a little weird, like, because you'll be fighting somebody, you'll be slicing them, and then they'll, like, push you off. And mm-hmm. there's no real, like, there's no real cue for it, I don't think. So... It's just like different people have different toughness. It's kind of a random thing, probably. But I also thought it was a little dumb, because if you're getting stabbed, if I'm slicing you with a knife, it's not like all of a sudden you're going to push me off. Maybe. I'm cutting you with a knife down your chest. And it looks fine in the game. It does make... She's got a little tiny knife, bro. Yeah, but I'm slicing you open. She's a little girl. She's like 19. She's little, dude. She's like a 115-pound 19-year-old. I would smash her. I'd hit her with the, two, the bat and she'd be gone, just like the bad guy you Until yesterday. she slices you across the chest. Look at her little butterfly knife. Oh, just laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. Uh, but besides like some of, the, some of the weird things with the game... And you play as a bad guy in the beginning. That's kind of crazy, too. I don't think that's a bad thing. Do that bad guy. When you play as her, she fights open melee combat. Awesome. She punches them. Yeah. She punches zombies. It's crazy. Yeah, it was tougher than Ellie with her knife. I hope we don't have to hand fight her at the end. She's going to smack us around. <laughs> just shoot her with her yeah. shotgun. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I don't know. Besides some of the small technical things, I get, like, probably 9.5. I just think there's a couple things, like, that are a little strange with it. So yeah. 9.5 based on, you know, it would be a 10. And then I'm thinking about, oh, well, there, are, there's, like, this. It's hard this, to grab this. the ropes when you jump. Yeah. Very but hard. It's also expected for a game that's trying to emulate realistic movement. Mm-hmm. Like, the Jedi game that you were playing, that tries to emulate realistic movement, and it sucks. And Last of Us looks so much easier to control. Mm-hmm. I didn't play the Jedi game, but, like, just from watching you Jedi... You see the and, difference, how I move around and uh, yeah. Last of Us compared to the Jedi Last game. of Us does such a, much, like, such a better job... Mm-hmm. We're talking about uh, the Fallen Order. Yeah. It's not Fallen Order. What is it? I think it is. I think it's Old Republic. But anyway. No, it's not Old Republic. The Star Wars game with the red hat dude. Yeah. I'm sure everybody will know what we're talking about. And if you don't, then you're probably just not as much of a nerd as us. Yeah, as long as I would give that game a 7. But you give it a 9.5. What game is better than that? Uh, what game would you give a 10 to? I don't know. But... When I, when I was rating it, I was just thinking, well, this game is definitely a 10 story-wise. Mm-hmm. And, w- like, when you look at it as a whole, it's a 10. But I can't ignore, like, the little, like, technicalities that I have in my brain. So that's the only reason I give it a 9.5. But well, what can't fire that? I don't know. Uh, I mean... I don't play enough games. So you can't think of a game better than that? You still only give it a 9.5? I give it a nine and a half. Just what about Zelda? What do you give Zelda? Zelda? Ooh, maybe that game's a ten. There's no way that game's better than Last of Us Two. It's a huge open world. Uh, it just it it's smoother because it's not trying to emulate realistic games. You have to be like insanely good to a point where you can't really do it on PS4 to have a ten in a game where you're 
recreate, we're trying to recreate realistic movement. All right, so you give a nine and a half, you can't think of a game better than that. Maybe Zelda, All Breath right. of the Wild. Breath of the Wild, not any other Zelda game, because... So my review, 10, perfect 10. The best game I've played on PlayStation that's any kind of adventure game. There's nothing close to it. It's the best in the genre. Um, I do have minor regrets with it. The story is beyond good. The graphics are beyond good. The game length is about perfect, it seems like. Um, you don't really, there's no point where the story really drags, even when I fall asleep because Forrest is oh, playing. Oh, oh. Huh? One more thing that would dock it down a little bit, not any farther than I already docked it down. Point 0.5 points is a little crazy for me to say, but... Yeah. You know what, maybe I'll up it to like a 9.8. <laughs> but it's really easy to get lost, too, sometimes. Real life's like, really easy to get lost, too. I like it. It's very realistic. Um, besides for choking people and gurgling them, um, he sh she should just break their necks or something. Something. I guess gurgling's not that loud, but yeah, like a silencer wouldn't be that. When you put a bottle over a gun, it doesn't really silence it either, but there's video game mechanics in there, too. Yeah. Story's great. Gameplay's great. It's really smooth moving. Um, the little bit of herky jerkiness brings you right out of the game, but it, the game is so immersive that like we're watching this game, and we're like holding our breaths and we're getting jump scared and all, all kinds of stuff. The game is phenomenal. It tears at your heartstrings. It's everything you could look for in a game. I would give it a ten. It does have some technical flaws, but nothing that would take away from it not being the best game for PlayStation Five. And really, PlayStation Four. Five, four, PlayStation Four. I'm sorry. Five is going to have something much more... It's already the best game five. for PlayStation 5. Probably, because it's going <laughs> to just get ported right away. But the only, re like, the only reason I dock point two, point one points, like 9.8 or 9.9 .9 would be my rating, just because of those technical flaws, uh, that has... I mean, that just has to become part of my rating. Just so everyone knows, this review is on 6-24-2020. Uh, before any of the updates that you've probably already had by the time you listen to this. Hopefully we blow up so a ton of people are like, what are they talking about? Yeah. And then they hear the day yeah. and they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's one spot where you jump in on the dinosaur thing where you did not get the trophy for putting a hat on everybody. I didn't know, it didn't give me uh, the cue to do so. I put the hat on both the dinosaurs I could. Gotta be on all You can't the take it off of the dinosaurs. So, anyways, there's a spot in there when you jump in the water you get stuck underneath and you get stuck in there and you die. Like, you can't get out. There is? Yeah, there's, there's a, a broken Yeah, there's a broken glitch that Derek ran into. Mm. But uh, on a game that's big, uh, other games got perfect 10s, like Red Dead got perfect 10. It's way better than Red Dead. Yeah. I love Red Dead. It, it also depends on what you're looking been. for. If yeah. you're like 13 or 14 years old listening to this and you like action games, I don't know if this is the game for you. Unless you play on easy and you get a bunch of ammo and you just shoot everybody. If you like any kind of stealth games or realism, this game is for you. If you like story, this game is for you. The bow also made it easier to be stealthy. Yeah. Derek hates the bow because you have to hit it perfect to kill someone on any harder difficulty than we're playing on. Also, difficulty ratings are going to affect how you play the game, too. Yeah. Uh, what we're playing right now, normally you get a lot of stuff. We're able to build everything that we need. We're full on stuff sometimes. Yeah. Uh, Derek runs around struggling for bullets at times. Yeah. But this game is phenomenal, the story's great. There's a bunch of little stuff scattered around, so like as you read notes, there's all these little stories and there's details in the, in the game too. The cards, the superhero cards are awesome. Yep. There's like Marvel cards in there that are exciting to collect. There's a whole story behind them. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. There's also, um, like in all the letters, there's all these little stories about stuff going on around, around the world. Mm -hmm. And then you see the, the dead bodies, the people that were leaving the stories, and sometimes that's sad in itself. Yeah, and then there's the... There's the at least journal as well. Yeah. There's just so much detail in this game. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's so much story going on. It's like, sometimes it's like, oh, that's a lot. Yeah. There's like, there's, there's side stories, there's mini stories, there's just like, there's so much stuff going on. Alright, awesome. well. Also, there's lots of diversity if you're looking for that. <laughs> there's not that much diversity. Asian guy, girl from New Mexico, lesbian girl. I guess a little bit of diversity. Bunch of there's people of all kinds of colors, <laughs> everywhere. All right, so uh, that's our review of Last of Us 2. I give it a 10, Forrest gives it a 9.8. I think it's the best game on PlayStation 4. Forrest? Mm, Probably, I, I haven't played all the games on PS4, so I can't. It's say. the best game I've played for PS4. I want to thank you for this Father's Day gift I got. Um, it's a picture of me and Forrest the day I got my black belt. That was my first role as a black belt, and my last role as a brown belt. Uh, I got with Forrest, and it's one of the greatest moments of my life, and I'm, I want to tear up. 
read about it right now. There's a there's also a picture of you getting your black belt behind yeah. you. Uh, this is probably the greatest thing I've accomplished in my life besides for you and Destiny and uh, getting married. But um, that day was really special to me and I appreciate you being there. And uh, I love this picture and I love to have it on this desk. I'm looking at it right now and uh, it's, it's really special to me. And uh, you might never beat me at Jiu Jitsu. Probably not. You did beat me at basketball. I didn't really beat you. I beat you by the score that we made because so, had to hand, you had to hand, we had to we had to handicap you. Yeah, we were playing five. I had to get thirty, and Forrest had to get five, and it was twenty-two to five. <laughs> right, you're much better today because it was cooling off. It's uh -huh. breezy today, yeah. and we had a seven on. We had seven and seven, and it was seven to five, so yeah. it was close. And then we played seven to eleven, and it was not so close. It's so frustrating though. Because what I'll do is I'll get six points, and then all of a sudden I'm going against somebody who does not want to lose at any cost. <laughs> it's so frustrating. It's like, I feel like most dads are probably like, oh, I'll just let them win one here and there. But it's like, no winning for me. I have to handicap you by 25 points to win. Yeah, even that is tough. Uh, it was also tired and gassed. And yeah. Bad. You're lucky I didn't beat you. If I would have hit that two and got on a roll, you'd run over. <laughs> I'm still mad I lost in five to 30. <laughs> then, we, then we made it 7 to 25, right? No, we made it, well, we started 7-11, then we did 7-15, then we mm. did 5-30, and then I think we went back down to 7-15, then we did 7-7, and then 7-11 today. Yeah, Forrest never going to beat me again. I get motivated. I don't want to lose. What I have to do is I have to, I have to go down like 6-2 and then get on a roll. I need a couple, because I, I keep missing easy layups, and it's so frustrating. I could have had three points in our seven and eleven game today. Sucks to be you. Keep practicing. Well, now this sounds mean because Forrest is thirteen and I'm like forty something. But I outwork you every game, and we're almost the same height. You, there's less than an inch difference between there's us. There's much more than an inch. I'm five eight at the tallest. There's no way, dude. There's no way. We're I'm still not back five to back. Ten. You're like, you're like that much taller. I'm than not me. five foot ten. All right, stop right now. All right, we're getting the camera. We're gonna stand back <laughs> to back right now. All right. Here we go. This is going to be shitty if you're listening on just the podcast itself. But here we go. Sorry about that, guys. Turn it right this way. Right here, so I can see. All right, come here. Stand back to back. There's not much difference between the two of us right now. You still got a couple... Oh. So... So, we just did the back-to-back -back comparison, and uh, you guys can zoom in on your personal devices and see there's not that much of a difference between us. You still have at least two inches on me, and you still are bigger and stronger. I'm bigger and stronger, but... Oh, and I can't guard you or else you win. <laughs> if I guard you, you get to, I'll lose 7-0 every time. <laughs> I have to let you shoot and miss and then rebound, <laughs> or let you miss a layup and then rebound yeah. off that. You put the pressure on, I'm going to score every time. So stupid. Alright, let's get out of here, man. It's over 30 minutes. Alright. Alright, I love you, dude. Thank you for following so, uh, Well, that was our mediocre review of Last of Us and our experience playing basketball. Alright, we're out. Good thumbnail today by me, too. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Um, me and Forrest have been making the thumbnails. Forrest's thumbnails went better every time, so <laughs> we've been using his. Today's his. Next uh, Follow Some Podcast, we're going to use mine. So, uh, leave in the comments who you think is better. Okay, sounds good. We are!